This is the place where bars nearly rival the number of residential houses. And even though residents are complaining... You can't send your child to the shops anymore. Huh? I feel if like she's a girl. Bar owners are not. You are here to stay. Yeah, I'm here to stay. <laughs> From a rich colonial past, now buried at the Nairobi City Park Cemetery within the capital's central business district, to a rather challenging present facing the nearly 400,000 residents of the estate. We have had a problem with water and drainage. Let me tell you the truth. There has lost everything. Over the next 30 minutes or so, you are about to take a journey of discovery set to reveal more about this Eastlands estate than you probably ever knew existed. Area code Don Home Estate begins now. The winds of change have certainly been blowing in Don Home's direction. If the estate was a human being, it would now be more than a hundred years old, struggling to remain relevant amidst a serious alcoholic addiction, as evidenced by the many bars within the estate. Back in the early 1900s, Donholm was not an estate, but a farm. A dairy farm, to be more specific. The owner of the farm was this man, James Kerr Watson, who was a British architect turned colonial farmer, who settled in the area where Donholm Estate now rests. Watson was a very wealthy man. It is said that his farm stretched out all the way from where the Nairobi City Stadium now is to Donholm Estate. The entire farm was estimated to be about 4,600 acres. History has it that Donholm was the first place within the entire British East Africa Protectorate to have a cattle deep. The deep was started as part of the colonialists' battle against the East Coast fever that was at the time ravaging many livestock in Kenya. Donholm was also the place where the first Ashaya cows were bred. The cows were named after Watson's birthplace, a town known as Ashaya in Scotland. So successful was his dairy farm that soon Watson got a nod from the colonial government to supply milk to the British offices within the city. He would build a Maram road network through his farm, connecting it to the city to easily transport milk to his clients. That pathway is what we now call Jogo Road. But it appears Watson wanted a bit of home in Kenya. That is because he nicknamed his farm Donholm, named after an estate in Glasgow town in Scotland where James Watson grew up. Over the years, the name has remained the same, but the place has changed tremendously. Rapid growth and development in Donholm was not witnessed until the early 1970s when government decided to construct three bedroom bungalows on an eighth of an acre plot for occupation. Most of the houses were sold off through a mortgage scheme to willing buyers. One of the buyers is a man I'm told is nearly as old as the estate. To clearly paint for us a picture of how Donholm was in the past, Thank you. This is Peter Kenoti and I'm to you. How, how Welcome. You? Welcome. We've heard so much about you. Good. I decided to meet him at his home. I've lived here for over 20 years. 20 years? Over 20 years. Over. Over, over 20. That is you, more than 20. Ah, Welcome, Mr. Otieno. Thank you. Thank you so much. Come on in. Asante ah, sana. Asante ah, sana. This is my humble abode. This yes. is where I live. Ah. Very good. For over 20 years? I've lived here for over 20 years with my family. Mm -hmm. They have grown and gone. So eventually I'm alone. Okay. But I live here and I'm a happy man. It's like I've walked into a time machine. I'm seeing a lot of old equipment, like the vinyl. It works really well. This is a oh, timetable. Mm -hmm. We used to call it a TT. Mm -hmm. I have over 300 records in the place. Which song do you want? <laughs> I can play in the I'm song. I'm not sure this is my kind of music. 
You have even nailed the type. What is your kind of music? 65-year-old Peter Kinoti Anampio's house is reminiscent of the 1980s. Here, you'll find vinyl records from the days of Dolly Parton, Jimmy Cliff and Elvis Presley. And what is this old looking... This is a JVC uh -huh. VCR. It plays these kind of tapes. It's a beautiful machine. To the old VCR machines used to play movies. Where are you? So this is missing in action to yeah. Chuck Norris. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Put the right way. Then press I it down. It. I press it down. They are mechanical. Okay. It's like a museum of archaic stuff. These are called the singles. They are kept on that row. Wow. You oh, keep, the, keep so them one yeah. by one. Like this? Yeah. Okay. And those have about 300 of them. Just the kind of home you can get the true background picture of Don Home Estate. Peter has lived here for more than 25 years. The houses were done well, and they had four toilets because Nuba Zabubu, they are on one toilet. These houses, we discovered, the house has no water and nothing. So I settled here. And those 20 years, or those many years I've been here, is because this place has good houses. Back then, very few estates existed within the outskirts of Nairobi. Donholm is certainly the oldest among other estates within Eastlands, like Kayole, Buruburu, and Tena. But back then, the estate's isolation made it vulnerable to security breaches that had initial homeowners move out of the estate in quick succession. In the three, there came a wave of crime, which was very bad. I personally was well laid here. In this with, house? In my children, and had carpets. I found my children laid here with four people with guns, and they wanted money, and they were very nice. And I had these pictures. I happened to be a very practicing Catholic man. They wanted money. There was crime rate. The crime rate was high. Though not entirely secure, the area's crime rate has since reduced. And now Donholm is much known for its growing commercial centers as it is its residential structures. The Donholm was actually the only estate around this area next to Umoja, and maybe Buruburu phase three. Omar Guled grew up in the estate after his father moved to this court back in 1983. Omar is now part of the growing number of second generation home occupants in the area after the older folk who have either passed away or retired back in the villages. But what I would want on this estate is for it to be better. It was in the 80s, where you could count the number of bars and you could have a number of shops and people would go about their ways and everybody would be a friend of another. But unfortunately, those days are long gone. Now the estate has undergone tremendous changes, resulting in tightly spaced multi-story apartments mushrooming all over the place. It's a metamorphosis that has since gathered its own moniker known as New Donholm. Old Donholm was built in the 70s, early 80s. New Donholm came in the 90s. Actually, most of them are flats. Oh, the New Donholm is flats. Most of the areas now are flats, yeah. Donholm was basically, I think, an eighth of a plot, an eighth of an acre then. And uh, we used to have small fences with the wood. So you could see all the way to the other side. Now, most of the estate comprises of gated courts, mainly due to security concerns. It's a far crying change, really, from Donholm, the dairy farm, where about 500 liters of milk was produced daily by James Watson. Don Home Estate was initially not meant to be an estate in the first place, at least not in the eyes of the dairy farm owner who owned the land where Don Home is, Mr. James Kerr Watson. But if Watson was to rise up from his grave, I'm sure he'd be very surprised at the developments that have since engulfed that particular area.
developments that have led to its fair share of trouble for the residents there. On the second part of Area Code, we shall be highlighting some of the challenges facing the residents of Donholm and possibly come up with both short-term and long-term solutions to those challenges. This is KTN News.